Hey guys, and welcome back to the second video in my Pi Game uh, Scroller series. I guess that's what we can call it, just a little side scrolling game. Uh, in this video, I'll just give you a quick sneak peek of what we're going to be doing. Pretty much, we're going to be setting up. Uh, some different objects that can be moving on the screen uh, to act as obstacles where then we can then we're gonna set up the hitboxes but of those objects and the character and then in the next video we're gonna go over collision and in the one after that we're gonna be doing scoring and like the end game and stuff like that so I'll give you a sneak peek here just by running uh, my other code my other program so you can see here, uh, just wait a second, we've got a saw with some spinning blades and the red boxes are just to simulate where the hitbox is going to be so that we know when our character is jumping up and down if he's actually going to be hitting that object. Uh, so right now obviously I don't have the collision set up but you can see that uh, everything's working well and we randomly kind of generate uh, objects on the screen like this. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. Make sure you guys stay tuned until the very end. But if you have any questions, always leave them in the comment down below. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do uh, for this is we need to set up our different obstacles or objects. I'm just going to call them obstacles in this case. So I'm going to start by just creating a new class. And this one I'm going to call my saw class. Okay, so we're just going to inherit from object. Oops. Uh, do our initialization function like this or method go. we're gonna do the same that we got uh, from here these ones here so x y with height like so and then we'll set them up down here so self dot x equals x self dot y equals y and so on Okay, we've got that set up. Now in here, I'm also going to create one more variable. I'm just going to call this self dot hitbox, and we'll just set that equal to blank for right now. Actually, we'll do this uh, x y width and height like so. There we go. Okay, and now we need one more method in here, and this is going to be our draw method, and then we're done with this. I'm just going to do self window. And then here we're going to do win.blitz. We can just, uh, we'll call this image. I'm going to fill this in, in a second, self.image. And then in here we're going to do self.x and self.y. And then actually underneath here, let's just go a step forward and we're going to do pygame.draw.rectangle. And then we're going to draw it to the window. We're going to draw it red. So by doing that, and then we're going to draw our hitbox. So we'll just do self.hitbox as it's already in the rectangle format here. And then we'll draw with a thickness of two. And then in here, uh, we're going to set up the hitbox afterwards. So one second, we'll do just so we remember self.hitbox equal to that. And then we're going to change these properties in here as our character is moving around. Okay, so now we need to get the image. So we've done that class. Uh, just like I have at the top of these classes here, I loaded up all the images. This one's just going to be, uh, I think it's like four images for our saw with the spinning blade. So to do this, uh, we're just going to, I'm just going to call this, uh, what do I call it? Image equal to this. And then in here we need to do pygame dot image dot load. And then in here we're going to type os dot path dot join. Now what this does here, if you haven't seen it before, is pretty much it allows us to access an image that's inside of a folder. So uh, in like a subdirectory or something like that. So that that way we don't have all our images mixing with our uh, Python scripts. And then the first image is called saw zero. I'm going to copy and paste this three times. And each time I'm just going to change this. So it's going to say saw one now. The next one, saw two. And the last one is going to be saw three. And you should already have all those images if you downloaded them from the GitHub. And there we are. Okay, so now we need to kind of animate through our images. So right now, all I'm doing is I'm just drawing the one image. Uh, we actually need to count through the images and draw them accordingly, just like we do up at the top. So just give me one second. Okay, so now um, we're just going to do another variable up here or attribute. I'm just going to call this self dot 
let's say here, uh, let's just say self dot count. It's fine for now. Set equal to zero. And then in here, we're going to say if self dot count is greater than four, actually not four. Let's see. What number do we want to do here? Uh, we're going to do uh, eight greater than or equal to eight. And I'll explain why I'm using this number in a second. Then we're just going to reset our rotate or our, our count variable here to zero. And then in here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say win.blit self.image. And then we're going to say self.count inside of this image right here. Integer divided by two. So what integer division does is it pretty much just um, is going to find the even amount that can go into something. So for example, if you're dividing four by three, um, then it's going to give you an answer of one rather than the decimal answer that you get there. So that this way, every two frames, we're drawing one frame of the saw so that it doesn't move too fast. And this is kind of how I animated up here just with different numbers. Um, this is just an easier example. That's why I didn't leave it in the starter file and that should all work like that. And then we actually, we need to make sure that we're incrementing our count. Otherwise that's not going to work. So we'll do self dot count plus equals one. Like so, okay. So now our first object's done our saw object. Now we want to move on to our next object, which I just like to call like a spike. So I'm just going to call this one class spike. We're going to inherit from our saw object, but just by typing saw because that's up here and that's going to save us a bit of time because now we don't need to retype out this. Uh, we're just going to change the draw method. So now all we need to do is we need to find the image. So this spike image is not moving. It's just a still image. So this makes it a little bit easier for us. So we're just going to do uh, image equals and then pygame game dot image dot load same thing as before os dot path dot join in here we need images comma and then i believe i just called my picture spike dot png oh that reminds me for all these images up here where we have saw zero we need dot pngs here otherwise you're going to run into an error with that so let me just do that quickly dot png my bad sorry about that okay so now we've got the image now we need to make our draw method so we're going to do define draw and then in here self win same as up here and all we're going to do here is we're going to do pygame game or actually win dot blit then our image so self dot image and then self dot x and self dot y like so now after that we want to draw our hitbox so we first have to change our hitbox so we're going to say self dot hitbox is equal to and we're going to change that in a second and then we're going to say pi game dot draw dot rectangle same thing as before on our window color red rgb here and then we're going to say self dot hitbox and too thick there we go okay so now we can take a breath here quickly we've got our spike class and we've got our saw class uh this one inherits from here so it's going to have the same properties for the uh initialization method uh we've got our images loaded up and everything should hopefully be working so now uh we're going to do the hitboxes so as I showed you in the other program, I'll run that quickly here. The reason that we create hitboxes is because an image is not perfect, right? So everything in Pygame becomes a rectangle when you draw it as an image. And you can see here that if we didn't have the hitbox, then if you were to hit even where it doesn't look like there's a spike, then it would classify as you uh, like knocking into it or hitting it, right? So when we do do character collision, it's important that we have the hitbox for these different objects so that you're not running into th things and you don't even know you're running into them. So for example, this saw here, you might even go well to move the hitbox down a little bit and the hitbox just is what's in red uh, so that we're not running into these corners here because we can't actually really create a circular hitbox uh, without a lot of really complex coding, which we're not gonna cover in this tutorial. Okay, so that's why we have the hitbox. So uh, now I'm just gonna tell you the numbers I use for these hitboxes uh, just to speed up things, make it a little faster, pretty much is relative to the position of uh, the object, right? So for our first object, which is our uh, saw, this is what I have here. I have self.x plus five. That's just moving it to the, uh, to the right five. And then we'll have self.y plus five, moving it down five, and then self.width 
minus 10, so that's the same on both sides, and self.height minus 5, like that. There we go. And now, after this, actually for this height here, we can just leave this like this, just realize that. Now for the next one, uh, spike, we have self.x plus 10, self.y, self.width, or actually, I think I just made this a static number. Yeah, I did. It is 28, just because of the width. I know the width of the uh, thing that we're drawing there, and then 315, like that. Okay, so now let's ju let's just draw these on the screen so that we can uh, we see them in action, make sure they're working. So I'm just temporarily doing this. You don't have to do this if you don't want, um, but I'm just going to create two objects. I'm just going to call saw equal to saw, and then in here, we're going to do Let's draw 300, 0, 48, 320, and then we'll just do, oh, sorry, this is spike, actually. Just change that quickly. We'll say saw is equal to a new saw object. We're going to draw this. I don't know, where do we want to draw this? We'll just draw it in the middle of the screen just so we can see it. 300, 300, and that is 64 by 64. Perfect. Now in here, we got to make sure we actually are drawing them. Spike.draw on the window and saw.draw on the window. Now I'm just going to add an E and a W here because I realize that they're the same name as the class. We're going to run into an issue there. And there we go. So now you can see we've got our images uh, loaded up here and we can see the hitbox on the spike and the hitbox on the saw. Now notice the saw is uh, massively large. That's just because we're, we're going to change it and make it a little bit smaller. just wanted to show you that first. Um, so when we do actually do that, the hitbox will be correct. So there we are. Everything looks like it's working. The saw has a little animation going. So now let's get the, uh, the saw to be the right size. So to do this, what we're going to do, uh, is just a little thing, uh, in Pygame where we can actually, uh, transform an image. So to do that, what we need to do is just type, uh, or use a little trick in Pygame, um, which allows us to actually transform an image so we can scale it down or scale it up. So in this case, we want to scale down. So where are our images in our saw here? We're going to do pi game dot, sorry, transform dot scale. And we'll just put this in brackets, our image. And then in here, what we want to scale it down to. So in this case, 64 by 64. Now we'll go ahead and we'll run the program. And we just ran into an issue. Saw dot draw is not defined. Hmm. Let's see here. Oh, it's because I just need to put another W here. My bad. Pi, well, really can't type today, can I? So make sure you spell Pi game correctly, and then everything should be working. There we go. So now you can see the saw looks pretty correct. Uh, the hitbox might be a little bit low, but that's not going to matter because our character is never going to go lower than this point anyways. And yeah, everything looks pretty good for our two hitboxes. So um, let's get our objects now moving randomly onto the screen. So we don't just want them floating in the middle like that. Obviously we want them to be moving. So there's a few things we need to do now. So we're just gonna get rid of these two objects here. These were just used to test out our program. And now we're gonna create a new list. I'm uh, just in this while loop here. And we're just gonna call it, uh, I'm gonna say objects. It's gonna set it equal to a, a blank list right now. Now, what I'm gonna do, uh, Quickly, before I don't forget, we're going to say for object, uh, with another T just so it doesn't mess up in our program. In objects, we're going to do object.draw, like that. Feel free to change the names of all this stuff if you want. You can make it X if you like. It doesn't really matter. I just like to make it so it makes sense. So this would work as well. X.draw, and then in here, just put window. Actually, you know what? We'll just leave it like this for now. Now, in here, what we need to do uh, is every time this event is triggered, remember we increase the speed and this happens every uh, half a second. So what we want to do is now we want to create another event that's going to happen every like two or three seconds. Uh, we can change that randomly if we want so that uh, we can then create a new object based on that. So let's create a new event. So we're going to say pi game dot time dot center score timer. So this timer again is going to trigger every, uh, at whatever time we set it. So I'm just going to say user event plus two. And then in here, I'm going to do random dot rand range, and we'll just make it between 2000 and 3500 so that we don't know exactly when it's going to come, but we know it's within two seconds and 3.5 seconds. Just add a little element of randomness here. 
Now make sure that, well, before we uh, run our program here, we import random at the top. Okay, and then we can come back down. And there we go. So now that this event is being triggered, uh, we need to check when the event is triggered. So just like we did here, I'm just going to copy and paste this, save myself a bit of time. Then we're going to change this to two. And in this case here, we're going to now append a new object into our list or new obstacle. So objects dot append. And then up here, we're just going to start by randomly selecting which objects we want to append. So if it's uh, if we get zero, so I'm just going to say r equals random dot rand range between zero and two. If we get zero, then we're going to append our uh, our spike. Otherwise, we're going to append our saw. And it doesn't matter what way you do it, just uh, so that we don't know exactly what one we're getting. So we'll say if r equals equals zero, and we'll say objects dot append, and then this is going to be a saw. And in here, we're going to make our X. It's going to be, again, we're going to do a random X. Actually, we won't do random. We'll just do 810 so that we know that it's on the right side of the screen so that we don't see it quite yet. It doesn't just pop up uh, and magically appear in our screen. It's going to look like it's sliding in. Uh, the Y value, we're going to set at 310. And then after that, we're going to do 64 by 64 for our width and our height. Okay, now we'll just do else because we know if it's not zero, it's got to be one because this can't be two. We'll copy this and paste this down here. And in this case, we're going to make this a spike. And then in here, we're not, uh, we'll put it at 810, I guess. And then for our Y value, it's going to be zero. We have 48 as our width. And then for our height, I believe we have put 320. And there we go. That should be good. So now that we're appending to the screen our objects, there's one more step that we need to do. We need to move the objects. So after we're drawing our objects, uh, we're creating our objects, we need to move them. So we're gonna do this another thing in here. We're gonna say for object, another T in objects. Then we're just gonna say object dot X plus equal or minus equal 1.4 because that's because we're moving it left, right? So just like we're moving the background, we're also gonna be moving the uh, X value of our object. So it looks like it's sliding left onto the screen. Another step I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna say if object.x is less than, and we'll say negative object.width with two Ts, so that it's off the screen and we can no longer see it. And we'll just multiply this by negative one. Uh, so that's the negative. Um, then we're going to get rid of the object. So to do that, we'll say objects, our list dot pop. Now what pop does is it removes an object at an indice. So we have to find the indice where we're moving the object. So to do this, uh, I hate typing this, but we're just going to say objects dot index. And then in here, object like that. So a lot of objects here, but object dot pop, we find the index of where our object is, and then we remove it from our list like that. Okay, so that should be it. Let's go ahead and run our program and see if everything's working okay. And give it a second to spawn in some objects. So you can see we have a saw coming in now. Another saw. So these are a little bit close together, so we might want to increase the time increment for our random. And there we go. We've got two spikes, another saw. So it seems to be working uh, pretty well. So what we want to do now is maybe just change the time increment. So just play around with it. Maybe two, uh, two seconds a little bit too quick. So maybe we'll make this between three seconds and five seconds, right? You guys can play around with this as you like, but uh, that's probably a good time increment. And that's gonna do it for this second video. So in the next video, I'm gonna go over the collision and then I'm gonna go over scoring. Uh, that also might lead into a fourth video, but that's gonna be it. It's only gonna be four videos. So if you guys liked the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you again in the next one.